You know how you walk outside at night, look up at the stars and think, wow, the universe is so big, so calm, so not actively trying to vaporize me right now. <laughs> yeah, let's ruin that. Imagine every star in the sky, every single one, suddenly doubled in brightness. Not just looked brighter, no optical illusions or atmospheric filters here. They actually start emitting twice as much energy as before, instantly, simultaneously, including the sun, because why not? Your first thought might be, cool, brighter stars, better stargazing. And sure, for about 0.03 seconds, the night sky would look amazing. Then, it would look like daytime. And then, well, then things get complicated. Let's start with the local celebrity, the sun. Right now, the sun shines with a luminosity of about 3.8 by 10 squared 6 watts, enough to toast your face from 150 million kilometers away. Double that, and we're now being hit with 7.6 by 10 squared 6 watts of solar power. That's the energy equivalent of detonating 92 billion Hiroshima bombs every second. On your face. The Earth, bless it, is designed with a relatively stable energy budget. It absorbs solar radiation and releases infrared radiation back out. But if we double the input, that balance gets roasted like a marshmallow over a flamethrower. Within hours, temperatures would skyrocket. Ice caps? Gone. Forests? On fire. Asphalt? Liquid. Your SPF 50 sunscreen? <laughs> a warm suggestion. Now, if you're thinking, hey, can't we just install a giant interplanetary sunshade? Great idea. Please file that suggestion with the Emergency Cosmic Infrastructure Committee right after Build Dyson Spheres Using Bubblegum and Hope. Meanwhile, beyond our solar backyard, stars across the universe are also having a moment. Red dwarfs? Glowing twice as hard. Blue giants? Basically interstellar flamethrowers now. Even black holes would get more dramatic, since the stars orbiting them would be dumping energy into space like a toddler with glitter. You might wonder, would we actually notice those distant stars being brighter? Absolutely, because brightness follows the inverse square law. Double the output, and nearby stars like Alpha Centauri appear four times brighter. The entire night sky would light up like Times Square got into astrophysics. Stargazing apps would crash. Astronomers would scream. Owls would retire. The brightness of the night sky, which currently allows for sleep, subtle moonlit walks, and the continued function of circadian rhythms would spike. There would be no night anymore, just different shades of day. And here's where it gets astronomically fun. Cosmic background brightness. Right now, the darkest sky you can observe still has a faint glow, mostly from the combined light of all stars and galaxies. This is known as the Olber's Paradox, the question of why the night sky isn't bright if the universe has infinite stars. The answer? The universe isn't infinite in age, and light has only had so much time to travel. But now, every star just got brighter, and their light is arriving now. The paradox doesn't just become a reality, it becomes a fire hazard. The night sky becomes as bright as the surface of the full moon, and that's before the Earth's atmosphere starts glowing from sheer photon overload. And speaking of the atmosphere, that extra sunlight, it doesn't just heat the ground, it charges up molecules in the air. Ozone layers start breaking down, radiation increases, the ionosphere, which handles our radio signals, turns into a sizzling electromagnetic soup. Satellites? Fried. GPS? Toast. Climate systems? Think of every hurricane, thunderstorm, and wind current you've ever heard of, and then imagine them with a Red Bull problem. But wait, you ask, what about photosynthesis? Won't plants love the extra light? Well, yes, for a day. Then the heat stress, UV damage, and wildfires make chlorophyll reconsider its life choices. Trees combust. Crops fail. Sunflowers turn away out of sheer protest. Meanwhile, in the broader universe, everything's heating up. Exoplanets that were borderline habitable now resemble boiling kettles. Comets start sublimating farther out. Entire planetary atmospheres swell and possibly escape. Galactic stability takes a nosedive. 
And of course, with all this extra energy flying around, stars themselves would live faster and die younger. More supernovae, more gamma ray bursts, more you woke up in the wrong part of the galaxy scenarios. So naturally, humanity does what it always does when things go sideways. We try to adapt. Scientists wear welding goggles to walk outside. Cities operate on inverse schedules where daytime work is banned. Some group on Reddit starts a Project Umbrella movement to build shade drones out of IKEA furniture and aluminum foil. It all collapses when someone accidentally builds a reflector instead and sets Luxembourg on fire. Eventually, civilization caves. We either move underground like moles or migrate to the poles where it's slightly less incinerating. The new weather channel includes forecasts like Tuesday, thermonuclear sunlight with a chance of regret. Oh, and remember all that radiation? Our DNA doesn't. Mutations increase. Evolution gets drunk. You end up with glow-in-the-dark pigeons and sunscreen-resistant grass. So if you ever find yourself near a switch labeled Double All Stellar Luminosity, please do not press it. Or if you do, at least leave a note saying oops. Because while the stars are lovely, doubling their brightness turns the universe into a cosmic tanning bed set to apocalypse.